people do. Picture this, you're behind the wheel of this Lexus LX570. You're trying to reverse out of your driveway, but there's a cat you're absolutely buried in like waist deep snow. Yeah, not exactly an ideal situation, but <laughs> yeah. in this case, ChatGPT took a look at the text stream data and it pulled out some key clues that suggest that this whole snowy scenario is actually pretty likely. So first off, it noticed a lot of wheel spin, which, you know, that's when your tires are spinning, but you're not really going anywhere. Oh, yeah, that, that spinning your wheels and getting nowhere feeling. Yeah. I know that one all too well. Exactly. And then on top of that, ChatGPT also saw a whole bunch of erratic throttle inputs, which basically means that the driver was probably pumping the gas pedal trying to get unstuck. So these are all like telltale signs that ChatGPT was able to use to kind of piece together what might have happened. Okay, so it's like ChatGPT picked up on all these clues. But how did it actually connect them to the idea of being stuck in the snow? That's some serious detective work. Yeah, and what's really fascinating here is that ChatGPT actually went beyond just identifying these individual data points, and it started looking for like patterns and relationships between them. So for example, it noticed that all those moments of intense wheel spin, they always seem to happen, like right when the throttle input was super high, which makes sense, right? You're hitting the gas, yeah. You're trying to power out, but the tires just can't grip the snow. Okay, yeah, I see. I see. So it's like chat GPT understood the cause and effect, right? Like lots of gas plus zero traction equals stuck. But I'm a visual person, so I got to ask, what did all this look like in the actual graphs that chat GPT created? Well, if you take a look at graph one, which shows the overall drive in dynamics of this whole sequence, you can see how the vehicle speed, it's kind of all over the place, right? And never gaining any momentum. And then if you look at the throttle input, you see all those like sharp increases. That's you really fighting for traction. Yeah, what about those G-force fluctuations? Those yep. gotta be playing a role here too, right? Oh, absolutely. So the G-forces, which is shown in the bottom plot of graph one, essentially tell you how much your body is being like pushed or pulled as the car accelerates or decelerates. And in this case, those sudden spikes, especially the ones that go above like two meters per second squared, they suggest that the vehicle was kind of like lurching forward as the tires momentarily gripped the snow. So like, you know those moments when you feel yourself being thrown forward or backward in your seat? Mm -hmm. That's what those G4 spikes are reflecting. Sounds like a bumpy ride. Mm. But is there like a specific moment in all this data that really streams stuck in the snow, you know, like the smoking gun? There is. If we zoom in on a specific time frame, let's say from 657 to 661 seconds, it becomes crystal clear. So graph two actually breaks down this crucial period, and you can see how the vehicle speed just plummets to zero despite your best efforts. And those orange markers on the graph, those are the telltale signs of wheel spin. Your tires are spinning like crazy, but the car is going nowhere fast. It's the classic stuck in the snow scenario playing out right there in the data. Hold on. So ChatGPT actually pinpointed this specific time window as like the most likely time you were stuck. Yeah. It recognized that all those key indicators we've been talking about, the wheel spin, the erratic throttle, the G-force fluctuations, they were all happening simultaneously during this short window. It's like ChatGPT narrowed down at search and said, aha, this is where the real action is. Okay, this is getting really good. So we can see the vehicle struggling, the wheels are spinning. But then what happened? Did you eventually like break free from this snowy prison? You did. Right around 660.8 seconds, you'll see this sudden speed increase. That's the moment you regain traction and the Lexus finally broke free. <sighs> it's amazing how we can see this whole like mini drama unfold just by looking at the data. But I got to admit, I'm still curious about those G4 spikes. Can you break down exactly what those mean in terms of how the car was moving? Like, I want to really understand what it felt like to be behind the wheel. Sure. So those G forces, they're a measure of acceleration. But let's translate that into something we can all relate to. So think of those sharp dips in the graph. Those are the moments when you're hitting the brakes pretty hard. The sudden peaks. Those are the times when you really slammed on the gas. And those flat sections near zero G-force, that's when the car was either coasting or just maintaining a steady speed. So it's like the G-force graph is a story of your movements. It's almost like we can feel those jolts and sudden stops just by looking at the data. Yeah. But how does all of this connect back to the Lexus being stuck in the snow? Hmm. Like, can we see evidence of things like ABS kicking in or those moments when the car might have slid around? Absolutely. And that's where the real detective work begins, connecting those G-force patterns mm -hmm. with other data points to get a complete picture of what happened. So let's start with that hard breaking event that we see like right around 655 to 656 seconds. You, you mentioned those G-force dips, right, which indicate that the driver hit the brakes pretty hard. But the data actually reveals something kind of interesting, even though the brakes were slammed on. 
the Lexus didn't actually slow down as quickly as you'd expect. Hmm. That's kind of odd. Yeah. So I'm pressing the brake pedal, but the car's not really stopping. That sounds like a recipe for disaster in the snow. Right. And that's a classic sign of ABS activation. So ABS, or anti-lock braking system, is a safety feature that basically prevents your wheels from locking up during hard braking, especially on slippery surfaces. It's designed to help you maintain control of the vehicle, but it can feel a bit strange if you're not used to it. Okay, so that explains why the car wasn't slowing down as quickly as I thought it should. The ABS was doing its job trying to keep me from skidding. It's almost like ChatGPT recognized that I was driving on a slippery surface just from that braking data. It's pretty impressive. Now let's fast forward to that moment around 657 seconds when you shifted from a stop into reverse. We see this sudden jump in throttle input all the way up to 45.5% but the speed barely budges. Oof. I can practically hear the engine revving and the tires spinning in the snow. I was really giving it some gas, but the car was not cooperating. And again, that points to wheel spin. Remember when you're stuck in snow? The tires, they often spin without actually propelling the vehicle forward. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. And those minimal positive G-force readings further suggest that the tires were slipping rather than actually gripping the road. Okay, I'm starting to see how each piece of data contributes to this whole snowy puzzle. It's like watching a slow motion replay of that moment in time, except instead of video, we're using data to tell the story. Exactly. And the story gets even more interesting as we move forward in time. So around 661 to 662 seconds, the Lexus is still struggling to gain speed, even though you're giving it gas. But then, bam, we see those erratic G4 spikes, a sudden jump to plus 0.47G. And at the same time, the RPM surge from 700 to 1900 in the blink of an eye. Whoa, I can almost feel those tires spinning wildly, kicking up snow and the engine roaring as I try to break free. It must have been a pretty intense few seconds. It likely was. That momentary spike in G-force probably indicates a brief moment of traction regain. So the tires finally managed to grab hold of something solid, but it was short-lived. It's the kind of sudden jolt that can happen when you're driving on a low friction surface like snow or ice. So we've got the ABS kicking in potential wheel spin and even a possible moment of traction regain. It's all starting to sound pretty convincing for the stuck in the snow scenario. But wait, we haven't even talked about the steering data yet. You're right. And the steering data is particularly revealing in this case. So throughout this entire sequence, we see these extreme steering inputs, swinging from negative 321 degrees to positive 337 degrees in just a few seconds. Whoa, those are some serious steering corrections. I must have been wrestling with the steering wheel trying to keep the car from spinning out of control. Exactly. Those rapid adjustments, those counter steering movements are telltale signs of someone trying to regain control on a slippery surface. Okay, so if we connect all these dots, the erratic G-force, mm -hmm. those surges of throttle without much acceleration and those wild steering corrections, it really does paint a picture of a vehicle battling its way out of a snowy situation. It does indeed. The combination of all these data points analyzed by ChatGPT strongly suggests that this Lexus was indeed stuck in the snow. It's almost like we have a digital fingerprint of this entire event. Okay, so case closed. But what about that other scenario, the possibility of a pedestrian impact? We can't just ignore that possibility, can we? Of course not. We gotta be <laughs> thorough, right? We need to explore all the possibilities. Okay, so how did ChatGPT approach this second scenario? Did it use like the same data points or is it looking for something completely different? It used the same data, but it analyzed it through a different lens, so to speak. So in the pedestrian impact scenario, ChatGPT was looking for specific indicators that would suggest a sudden and unexpected collision. So what kind of indicators would point to a pedestrian impact? I imagine it would look very different from the data we've been discussing so far. You're right, the data signature would be quite distinct. So for a pedestrian impact, we'd expect to see a very sudden and sharp spike in G-force, either positive or negative, indicating that abrupt deceleration that would occur during a collision. Think of it as that sudden jolt you feel when you slam on the brakes, but much more intense. Okay, so a major G-force spike. But wouldn't we also expect to see some sort of reaction from the driver? Like, wouldn't they hit the brakes or swerve to try to avoid the impact? Absolutely. Those driver reactions are crucial pieces of the puzzle as well. So Chad GPT would be looking for unusual brake pressure changes, like a sudden and hard application of the brakes, which would indicate a panic response. Mm -hmm. We'd also look for abrupt steering corrections that don't align with any other driving context. You know, those sudden swerves or jerks of the steering wheel that might happen if a driver's trying to avoid a collision or if they lose control after an impact. So we've got our checklist of potential impact indicators, a sudden and sharp G4 spike, a hard braking event and erratic steering inputs. 
It sounds like ChatGPT was really playing detective, looking for any clues that could support this alternative scenario. It was. And what's even more impressive is that ChatGPT didn't just analyze these indicators in isolation. It also considered the timing of these events in relation to each other. So for example, if we saw a sudden G4 spike followed immediately by a heartbreaking event, that would be a much stronger indicator of an impact than if those events happened separately. So it's all about context and timing. It's not just about the individual data points themselves, but how they relate to each other and the overall sequence of events. Exactly. And that's where ChatGPT's ability to analyze complex patterns really shines. It can sift through all that data and connect the dots in a way that would be incredibly difficult for a human to do. Okay, so the evidence isn't looking good for the pedestrian impact theory. But what about those G4 spikes? Could they have been strong enough to cause, like, a serious injury, even if they weren't from an impact? That's a great question. To answer it, ChatGPT did something really clever. It calculated the average G-force during that whole four-second period. And it turns out it was just 0.2 G. Wait, 0.2 G? That doesn't sound like much. What does that even mean? It's actually a very small amount of force, like one-fifth of the force we feel from gravity. Think about it like this. It's like gently slowing down in a car or the feeling you get when an elevator starts moving up slowly. So not exactly something that's going to throw you through the windshield. Nope. To give you some context, mild discomfort usually starts around 1 to 2 G. And to actually break bones, you'd need forces of like 50 G or more. Wow. So 0.2 G is really tiny in comparison. But did ChatGPT consider any, um, any unusual cases where even a small force could be fatal? Oh, yeah, it did. Just to be thorough, you know, it looked at things like um, severe chest compression that could lead to a, uh, a cardiac arrest or certain types of head trauma that can be really dangerous, even at lower forces. But those are like really specific and uh, pretty rare scenarios, right? Exactly. And even in those cases, the forces involved would be way higher than 0.2 G. So looking at all the evidence, ChatGPT concluded that the data just doesn't support the pedestrian impact theory. Okay, I'm convinced ChatGPT's analysis clearly points to the Lexus being stuck in the snow. Yeah. Not involved in a pedestrian impact. But before we wrap up this fascinating deep dive, I have to ask, is there anything else ChatGPT analyzed in the data? Any other aha moments that helped solidify its conclusions? Well, yeah, there, there were a couple things, actually. Um, remember how we talked about ChatGPT using specific data points to reach its conclusions? It was like following a trail of breadcrumbs looking for clues. Yes, it was fascinating to see how it pieced everything together. What were some of those aha moments for ChatGPT? So one of the key things that ChatGPT highlighted was how those sudden G-force spikes, they lined up perfectly with moments of traction regain. It even pointed out how these spikes occurred right when the vehicle speed increased after being at a near standstill, yeah. which, you know, that really reinforces the idea of the tires finding grip in those slippery conditions. So it wasn't just the spikes themselves, but their timing in relation to other data points oh. that really sealed the deal for ChatGPT. It was able to understand the sequence of events. That's right. It's all about connecting the dots and seeing the bigger picture. And when we do that, it's clear that those G4 spikes were a natural part of driving in the snow not necessarily a sign of an impact. It's amazing how ChatGPT was able to sift through all that data and zero in on those key indicators, almost like it was thinking like a human investigator, but with the speed and precision of a computer. It really is. I and remember those other indicators we talked about, like unusual brake pressure changes, throttle behavior, and steering inputs? ChatGPT analyzed those as well, comparing them against what we typically see in a pedestrian impact scenario. And what did ChatGPT find when it looked at those other factors? Did anything stand out? Basically, it found a consistent lack of evidence to support the impact theory. So there were no sudden spikes in brake pressure right after those G4 spikes, and there was no panicked break-in or sudden swerving. So no erratic behavior at all. It sounds like ChatGPT was really thorough in its analysis, ruling out the pedestrian impact scenario step by step. Absolutely. It meticulously examined each potential indicator and found that none of them hmm. matched what we'd expect to see in a pedestrian impact. And that's what's so powerful about data analysis. It helps us separate speculation from fact, using evidence to arrive at a solid conclusion. This whole deep dive has been a real eye-opener. Who knew vehicle data could be so captivating? It's like we were right there in the car with you, experiencing those moments of wheel spin and those jolts of acceleration. It's true. And in this case, it helped us solve the mystery. You were definitely stuck in the snow. Case closed. A huge thanks to you for guiding us through this data-driven adventure. And to all our listeners out there, keep those detective hats on. And remember, data can unlock some pretty amazing secrets.
Until next time.